essential uh, criteria of essentialism is essentialist program are academically rigorous for both slow and fast learner common subjects for all students regardless of their ability and interest but how much of is how much uh, is to be learned is adjusted according to the student's ability now don't doesn't it sound very malicious I mean, this is what our, our syllabus and our curriculum is or is lying on. It's the notion of essentialism. There's a fixed body of knowledge. All Malaysians need to go through it. Like even the biggest debate of what is history. But the reason the debate is there because we only allow one interpretation of history to be mainstream. So that's why there's, it's contested. If if everyone allows, if there was a uh, environment where different people could come in at different points to bring in their, their notion of history, then there's nothing to contest. From the essentialist point of view, there's only one. So therefore, there's, everyone needs to compete because in, in that one, you need your ideas and your agendas to be manifested. So it's, uh, so that's, I mean, that's what essentialism is all about. Uh, it advocates longer school days, longer academic years, more challenging textbook Essentialists maintain that classroom should be orientated around teacher who serves as an intellectual and moral role model to the students. So essentialists pays a lot of emphasis on academic teachers, the academic in the class, partly because they are content driven, therefore those who possess the content are given prominence. Uh, and, and this is also true because they give fixed body of content prominence. See, the, it will be slightly different when I cover the other philosophies. Over here, they believe there is a fixed body of knowledge and those who, who have possession of this fixed body of knowledge are prominent members of society. Now, teaching is teacher-centered and teachers decide what is most important for the student to learn with little emphasis on students' interest because it will deviate time and attention from learning the academic subjects. Essential teachers focus heavily on achievement test scores as a means of evaluating progress. Uh, once again, I think I don't have to mention much about this. Uh, most of you all who are from the Malaysian context, standardized testing is, is like paramount and, and everything revolves around standardized testing. Now the next essential idea is in an essentialist classroom, students are taught to be culturally literate, that is, to possess a working knowledge about people, event, ideas, and institutions that shape society. Essentially, hope that when students leave school, they will possess not only the basic skills of extensive knowledge, but also discipline and practical minds capable of applying their knowledge in the real world setting. Now, I have two uh, great examples that I'd like to share with you uh, at this moment. I was teaching in a boarding school once, and they used to have this class for the for the school leavers in the fifth and sixth form. Uh, I think somewhere around towards the end of the year, call it cultural enlightenment or something like that. Essentially, what they were doing was teaching you how to dine uh, Western tradition. Of course, uh, they were they had presentations of all the different cutleries, the order in which you should use them. The sitting position, whether the glass should be on the right hand or left hand, and it was very important which hand it was, and in the whole sequence. The sad part is people never really experienced those experiences in the school. It was it was brought in because it was expected to be cultural elite. Uh, the one should be very well informed about formal dining, although one never really practiced in the school setting. Uh, the other thing was. Uh, uh, we expect subjects like history to be very teacher-centric. The way the curriculum was introduced is, is basically black and white. These are things happened and these are things that happened. This is how you look at it and this is not how you look at it. History will be, will, uh, under from the essentialist point of view, history will never be taught from a debate perspective. What if, is this the only way? Did this really happen? Uh, is it reported in a different, uh, in another context? Because the essentially perspective towards knowledge is fixed and one needs to possess it the way it is meant to be. Um, the next major idea is discipline is necessary for systematic learning in school situation. Students learn to respect authority 
in both school and society. Now, I have this is a very important idea because uh, recently I was working with someone and they told me uh, uh, there was an argument. I mean, sorry, there was a dialogue between two academics in the school of education. So one came and said that uh, I need you to run this course on, let's say, uh, reflection. So the academic A, assuming there's two academics, one is called academic A and academic B. So the the essentialist or academic A who was an essentialist basically jumped onto the net, started googling all kind of content knowledge that they could get on on reflective learning, and and he listed down the whole series of things that one would able to talk and deliver through the no, uh, on the notion of reflective learning. But the academic B, uh, who was much more uh, wiser in some aspects, said, said, no, this is not how we should design a course. I would like to sit from the perspective of what people really need to learn or able to perform under, after my lecture. So they, they, they started, he started listing down the outcomes that they have to attain. And then he said, what activity I could create so that this person will learn and experience this and therefore master this competence, this, this particular skill or body of knowledge. See, the whole day two different perspectives. One was content driven. They thought, okay, since I was told to deliver this content, I will go and hunt and gather content and deliver. The other one says, it's not about content. It's not how many pages of PowerPoints or how many pages of documents you have to quote. It's about what people needed to know. And sometimes it's not great science. Isn't it? There was not really a big body of knowledge. In this particular case, there's not much body of knowledge on reflective learning. But there's a general sense of what it means to be reflective. So there are men, much, I mean, there's a whole body of literature out there, but they paraphrase each other in slightly different ways. Basically, there's, there's not much depth to this. But you see, if you cover from one perspective, you are driven by content and you forget why you were invited to teach this particular one. And if you cover the other one, and you're not too interested in depth, because you're just looking at of the process and how it needs to be done. So this is a great importance to give. Discipline is necessary, but how much? Because you don't want to be overwhelmed with giving people uh, body and body knowledge one after another, and then lose the trees. I mean, focusing so much on the trees that you lose the forest in the process. And the final uh, point that I would like to talk about the curriculum from the essentialist perspective is teacher need to, they they en emphasize that teachers need to be matured and well educated uh, who know their subjects well and can transmit their knowledge to the students see once again they they this is like the cap of the entire philosophy it's very teacher centric it's content driven things that they don't highlight is the learning the processes of thinking and and problem-solving ability. I mean, this is a bit silent from the essentialist perspective. 